Lovely, thanks Meg. So hello and welcome everybody. This is the um, this is the Northern Territory Trade Training Programme. This is the launch of the training programme in New Zealand. So it's really great to have you all here. My name is Karen Smith. I'm the Domestic Distribution Coordinator for Tourism NT. And today I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction and an overview of the Northern Territory and introduce you to some of our key operators. Um, before we start, um, just a reminder to ensure that your video is off and I think everyone is doing that, which is great. Just keep your microphone on mute. If you've got any questions, you can send them through the chat box. Um, and we will be recording this session as we'll put it on the website later in this week. So I'll just share my screen so that I can kick things off. All right, so. Okie dokie, so I just want to welcome uh, some of our operators here today. So we have, um, from Journey Beyond, we have Mark Leopold. He's from the beautiful Garn Rail Experience, which run between Adelaide and Darwin, and they stop in at Alice Springs. I'm sure you will be familiar with the GAN. We have Peter Graham from Voyages, and they run Ezrock Resort at Uluru. And um, Ezrock Resort is the only accommodation on offer at Uluru, but they have um, a variety of different options on offer. And we have Jeff Cameron Smith from Nautilus Aviation. Um, they run a variety of heli tours around Darwin and the top end, and these include scenic flights, heli fishing, and um, the really cool heli pub crawl. So we'll take it away with Mark if you want. To, uh, Sorry, um, sorry, we won't do that. We're going to keep going. So, um, thank you for joining, guys, and we'll talk to you very soon. So, I just wanted to touch on COVID nineteen. Um, as you know, it's um, a bit of a moving beast, and um, as we know, it only takes one day for things to change, as we've seen this week in South Australia. So, we are excited to. Um, read that there was talk in New Zealand about opening its borders um, without quarantine in quarter one of next year. However, um, we know this might have changed already, um, which is a bit disappointing. But the good news is, is that the Northern Territory is open um, to those who are not from a declared hotspot. So there is a New Zealand and NT travel bubble in place at the moment. So New Zealand travellers can enter the NT without quarantine, which is really great. However, this is one-way travel only um, and travellers will need to quarantine on return to New Zealand. So all travellers into the NT need to complete a border entry form. Um, and this can be found on our dedicated coronavirus website, which is coronavirus.nt.gov.au. There's also um, a hotspot map, so it, it shows all the, the current hotspots, and there's a couple of those in place in Australia at the moment. So I just want to give you a bit of an overview of the training program. Um, the aim of the training program is to increase, help increase your knowledge of the NT so that you can sell the region with confidence. Um, and we have a lot of resources which will be online. It means that you can access these at any time. And it also gives you a point of contact at Tourism NT. So if you've got any questions or um, queries or any, something that you're having trouble, difficulty understanding, then you can get in touch with us. And our contact details are at the bottom there at trade.tourismnt at nt.gov.au. So how the program works is that every quarter we'll host a webinar like this. We'll, um, it will be recorded and put on our website. So if you miss it, then you can watch it at a later date. We'll release a new online training module um, and a newsletter. And every quarter we have some really great prizes up for grabs. Um, and to be into one, you just need to make sure that you've registered and watched the webinar. That's either live or pre-recorded and that you've completed the module. So the webinars will take about 35 to um, 45 minutes each quarter. The modules will take about 10 minutes. And there's three of these online at the moment. And that includes an introduction to the NT, drive holidays in the NT, and busting some myths about the Northern Territory. And we know there's a few misconceptions out there. So please, um, when you have some time, go through these and get yourself a little bit more familiar with the Northern Territory. Um, we also have some really great trade resources on that site, and these include 
Um, the other webinars that we've run with the Australian Trade Training Program, which you know are, are worth a watch, we have itineraries there, which are really helpful. Um, really great place for you to start if you've got um, a customer wanting to get some ideas of what they can do in the Northern Territory. We have the regional fact sheets, and these give an overview of each region and what's on offer. We have a link to our image gallery. And um, we have our virtual journey. So these are some really good short videos which will just help you understand a little bit of the Northern Territory and the places um, that are sort of the key regions. And we also have some maps. So um, there's quite a bit there. As I mentioned, we have some really great prizes up for grabs. So every quarter we'll have more prizes. This quarter for the launch, we've got a fantastic prize on offer and I'll just quickly run you through some of what's included on that. It's worth about $12,500, so it's definitely worth um, being part of the program. So it's a seven night package for two. It includes return economy flights from the nearest your nearest New Zealand city. There's three nights at Sales in the Desert, which is a five star hotel at Uluru. There's a night at the Field of Light um, dinner experience. We have a astro tour, a traditional workshop. Um, Sorry, a traditional painting workshop. We have a tour of the Katajuta Valley of the Winds. Um, there's an Uluru tour, um, including a barbecue at sunset. We have a sunrise camel ride. We have a night in the Alice Springs, entry to a desert park in Alice Springs. We have a beautiful overnight experience on the GAN traveling through to Darwin and that stops in at Catherine. We have two nights accommodation in Darwin and entry to the Crocosaurus Cove. We have a really cool 30 minute scenic flight over Darwin that is with Nautilus Aviation and a dinner cruise with the Darwin Harbour Cruises. So it really is a trip of a lifetime. Just a reminder, just to complete the requirements, which is watching this webinar and completing two of our modules to be into one. So good luck with that. Just want to ensure you know exactly where the NT is. As, um, as you know, Australia can be confusing because it is so big. Uh, but as you can see in the map here, the Northern Territory is the top and centre. So it is a huge territory and it is about five times bigger than New Zealand. So it's 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 pretty large. The population of the NT is about 245,000 and Darwin has about 150,000 residents. So it is a good sized city. And there's two main areas of the Northern Territory. We have the and that includes Darwin, the Tiwi Islands, Kakadu, Arnhem Land and Catherine. So the top end is very green and lush. And then we have the red centre, which is Alice Springs, Oliver and Tennant Creek. And so that's very dry and red. So flights coming into the NT, there are three main airports. That they are in Darwin, Alice Springs and Oliver. So the connections from New Zealand will be through the Eastern Seaboard. That'll be Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne and, and I believe Adelaide too. The connections at the moment have been um, you know, reduced obviously due to COVID, but um, these will be you know, back up and running as soon as our borders have opened. So getting around the NT, it is a really good self-drive destination. Um, there's rental cars available at all of the airports and we have some good itineraries on our website which will help clients if that's what they want to do. Um, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a huge region. So um, the length of the Northern Territory is about 1900 k's and New Zealand is about 1600. So it's a fair distance. It's definitely not something that you're going to send your clients to just for a few days. They want to they'll probably come here for a, you know, um, for a week or so. So it's really easy to get around by cars, well serviced with all the usual transport and tour options. And um, most of the distances from the top end are about three hours um, and the red centre it's about five hours. So the distance is just a little further down there. And for those with some more time in their hands, we have a really great itinerary called Explorer's Way, which will take them through the length of the Northern Territory, stopping at some of the more unique places such as Tennant Creek. So the NT seasons, we get a lot of questions about the seasons in NT and that's mainly because it's a bit confusing as there are two different climates in the Northern Territory. So we're about to come into the summer season. So in the top end, the season is referred to as the tropical summer and it lasts for about six months from November to April. And during this time, the weather is quite similar to Asia. So it's hot, it can be humid and there are tropical uh, storms. 
but it's when the waterfalls and the wildlife in places like Kakadu National Park really come along. The Red Centre is very much like the rest of Australia and New Zealand. It has four seasons and during summer it gets hot. It can get up to about 35 degrees and it's a dry heat. So um, there are plenty of swimming holes and swimming pools around for people to have a dip. Um, and it is also, because of the temperatures, it's a really great time to, to snag a bargain. So the NT is open all year round, um, but a really good time to visit, particularly for Kiwis, is during the dry season in the winter. And that's when temperatures are a little bit lower, um, but it's a really great winter escape from New Zealand. So I know that you'll probably be fairly familiar with our icons. We have Uluru and we have Kakadu National Park, but I just want to take you through just a sample of what else we have on offer in the Northern Territory. So you can take a swim with a five metre croc and live to tell the tale. And this is at Crocosaurus Cove in Darwin. Darwin is a really multicultural city and its close proximity to Asia means it has the best luxes on offer in Australia. About 100 k's north of Darwin are the beautiful Tiwi Islands, which are famous for the Aboriginal culture, fishing and their love of footy. You can see crocs in the wild from the safety of a boat. You can discover the, some of the quirky Northern Territory pubs on a Halley pub crawl. You can cruise over floodplains on an airboat. You can discover some of the fascinating wildlife like the buffalo here. There's a really great range of events and festivals on offer in the Northern Territory and this includes the Taste of Kakadu which takes place in May every year. We have a crocodile shaped hotel which I'm sure there aren't too many of these around in the world. This is in Kakadu National Park. There's a great range of Aboriginal cultural experiences on offer throughout the NT, and this is including visiting some rock art sites like this one here in Arnhem Land. The Aboriginal culture is the oldest living culture in the world dating back about 50,000 years. So to give you some context, the Maori culture in New Zealand is about 1,000 years old. We have a huge range of beautiful clear swimming holes like this one at Alsea National Park. The Catherine Outback experience is where you can see horse breaking and working dog demonstrations. And Top Ditch is where you can create your own Aboriginal painting and learn about traditional hunting and fire lighting techniques, and that's in Catherine. We have the Kalu Kalu or the Devil's Marbles in Tennant Creek, which are massive granite boulders, they're about six metres high and they've been formed over millions of years. You can enjoy a really cool sunrise hot air ballooning experience in Alice Springs. So instead of um, attending the Melbourne Cup, you could come to the Camel Cup, which takes place in July every year in Alice Springs. We have a kangaroo sanctuary, which is home to abandoned and injured kangaroos. You can experience pure luxury on the Garn, which travels between Adelaide and Darwin, and that stops in Alice Springs. You can experience sunrise on a camel, which um, these tours take place in Uluru and Alice Springs. We have a dining under the stars experience at Uluru, which is a once in a lifetime, definitely once in a lifetime experience. You can visit the Field of Light, which is a really cool installation made up of about 50,000 lights. And this is run by Ayers Rock Resort, and they have a variety of ways that you can experience this. And last but not least, probably one of the most beautiful things about the NT are the huge clear skies. So this is just a snapshot of what we have on offer. As I mentioned, um, we have itineraries on our website, so that's a really great place to start if you're looking for some ideas. Um, or you can contact me directly. I can help you point, point you in the right direction of what you might be um, what you might be after if you're looking for some more information. So that's it from me. Um, we'll hand over to our operators now. Meg, was there any um, questions? No questions. 
Great. Okie dokie. So we're going to hand over now to Mark from Journey Beyond. Mark, do you want to go ahead and share your screen? Yep. Thanks, uh, thanks, Karen. Just one second and I will share this. So now are you see my slideshow there or are you seeing the other screen? No, I can see your, your slideshow is good to go. Slideshow is good to go. Excellent. In that case, I will just turn off my camera. So, hi everyone. Um, thanks for your time today. Um, my name is Mark Leopold. I'm with uh, Journey Beyond and we do own and operate the GAN, but in addition to that, we also own and operate Darwin Harbour Cruises. So, I and I'm going to start today by talking about our cruises up out of Darwin. Um, I won't talk too much about Darwin as a as a destination, but it is a fantastic place to go. And one of the best ways to experience the top end is on the harbour to see one of its famous sunsets. And you can do that with us on our Darwin Harbour cruises. So we only have two options of tours up here. The first option is our sunset dinner cruise. Now, both of the cruises are on the same boat, so they do go, they both run for two and a half hours. It departs daily from February to December. And the dinner cruise includes a, a beautiful dinner using or focusing on the local Australian, Australian produce and seafood. Now, pre COVID, it was served buffet style. We're still um, running the, the the dinner as a as a buffet option, but it is served by our staff, so our guests don't need to um, touch anything. So our gar um, our guests will serve serve the meals up there. Then, if people don't want to do the the dinner option, then we do just have a sunset cruise option as well. Um, the boat that we use is a three level um, uh, catamaran, which you can see here on on your screen at the moment. The, the the main level on the on the, the waterline there is the the dining room and we have the the special tables out the front that's kind of our premium dining dining area the inside is air conditioned um, for, for guests who want to get out of the elements a little bit more the top level is where we have where we have most of the sunset um, cruise options we can serve uh, platters and drinks for people up there if they don't want to have the full dining um, dinner option they can just um, do the sunset cruise and get a platter of local produce to enjoy what they're while they're doing it um, and then the middle level we quite often we hire that out for for groups and, and functions and events so that can be hired separately of course if if you've got a, a large group then we can also hire out the entire boat as well but it is a fantastic way to, to see a bit of Darwin and experience one of those fantastic uh, top end sites we have up there. Now, I did skip over a, a couple of slides, so I'm just going to go back quickly. Uh, no. um, so as I mentioned, we can do events up there. We can charter for up to 270 people or, or one of the individual deck, depending on the size of your group. Um, and then we also have another vessel called the Tumlerin. Now this one we only do for private charters. So up to a maximum of 40 guests, but we can really tailor this to, to suit whatever your needs are. So if you just want to do a straight cruise, we can do that. If you want to do um, add in meal, um, dinner, drinks, um, other options, we can also include those as well. Um, I'm not going to show you my video because we bit short on time today. Um, so I will trip, um, tick on to our Australia's great train journeys, of which the GAN is Australia's most iconic iconic rail experience that we that we own and operate. Now, as mentioned before, the GAN does run from Adelaide to Darwin or in reverse. And I guess just quickly on the on the flight things, pre-COVID there were direct flights from Auckland through to Adelaide. And it's our understanding that those flights will resume once um, once borders open and demand increases. So a great way to fit the the train into an itinerary would be uh, fly direct into into Adelaide, jump on the GAN, and head straight up um, towards the towards the top end. Now, the GAN Adelaide to Darwin 
operates February through to November. It can be done in reverse, um, but only in three, for three months of the year, February, March and November only. So this itinerary here is a three day, two night experience, and you can also do the individual sectors on it. So you can do um, Adelaide to Alice Springs, Alice Springs to Darwin, or in reverse, you can do Darwin to Alice Springs or Alice Springs to Adelaide as well. So if you if your guests are a little bit short on time, then they can um, they can split the journey up like that. Now I guess one key point to remember about the trains is that we're not just a point to point travel service. We really do want to showcase the destinations that we that we travel through and provide a guest with a really good experience of those destinations. So on the GAN, we actually stop the train and allow guests to to do touring, which are included in the fares as well. So. In the, the Northern Territory, we include tours in Catherine. So we have, well, depending on the time of year, we have three options there. All year, um, for the entire season, we operate the Nipalach Gorge Cruise. So that's the, the two gorges that we go into. We also offer the, the first gorge Aboriginal rock art tour there. And then during the season, which is April through to October, we also offer people with the chance to go and do the Catherine Outback experience as well. Then moving down to Alice Springs, we offer a number of tour options there, including um, Simpson Gap Discovery Walk, um, the Outback Desert Parks, and an Alice Springs town tour as well. So the, the train is a, a great way to experience the full destination, not just get from Darwin down to Alice Springs or, or beyond. It really is an experience in itself. It's all the fares are uh, all inclusive. So we do offer all meals, all drinks and the touring that I've just mentioned as well. Now, our flagship journey, so the GAN is typically a three day, two night itinerary. Our flagship journey is called the GAN Expedition. Now, the key difference with this one is that it's a four day, three night experience. And that extra day allows us to include a full day touring in Alice Springs and also a four day touring in Cooper PD. Now, when we stop in Alice Springs, there is also the option to upgrade to a, uh, a scenic flight to Uluru where, where guests would, uh, they land, they do a flight over the rock, they land, they have lunch, they do a, a walk, and then fly back to Alice Springs to join the, the rest of the train at the Outback uh, Telegraph Station you know, that we have in the Alice Springs before continuing their journey. We also offer the, the other touring experiences in, in Catherine and Alice Springs as well as part of this journey. So it really is a um, great option for people who have got a little bit more, a little bit more time. Now I'm just going to show a quick video here. Um, so hopefully this will work. So this just um, shows some of the highlights on the GAN and the GAN expedition. Yeah, same train, but um, but two quite different experiences depending on how much time your guests have. Now, on the trains, we do have two levels of service. Um, everyone on board the train gets a sleeper berth. Doesn't matter which level you're um, you're travelling in. Um, platinum is our our top level of service, our premium level, if you want. Now, there are a lot of um, benefits for guests travelling in platinum. You get private car transfers to and um, from the terminal at the beginning and end of your journey. Um, you get a, a, a higher quality of food and beverage on one train and some other other little benefits. But the real 
key thing that most of our guests really love about our platinum service is the, the cabins. Um, Platinum's in both a double and a twin service configuration. So here on your screen, you can see the, the double configuration with the double bed converts to the, the two-seater lounge during the day. Um, and then you also get the, the, the bigger ensuite with a separate shower, uh, vanity and, and toilet configuration. Um, the, twin, um, the twin cabins are, uh, have the same bathroom, are exactly the same size, but obviously they have the two single beds instead of the one double bed. Then gold level, for want of a better word, this is our, our entry level and probably our most popular um, level of service. Again, everyone still gets their own sleeper cabin. Gold comes in both twin and single cabin configurations. Um, but the main difference is that the gold service cabin, the twin cabins have a single upper and lower berth at night time and a three seater lounge during the day. And then the bathroom is more compact all in one unit. So you still get your, your own shower, uh, vanity and toilet, but it's just a, a little bit more compact, um, compact unit for that. But again, it doesn't matter which level of service your guests travel in. All of our guests get, um, get their overnight accommodation on board the train, you get all your meals, all your drinks. So all your drinks include um, beer, wine, spirits, cocktails. If you've got guests who want to have a Bloody Mary with breakfast, then they're more than welcome to, to indulge themselves. And then, of course, we do stop the train and include that fantastic brewing in Alice Springs and Catherine as part of the, as part of the journey. Um, I probably won't show all of this because I know we're, we're running tight on time. I'm not sure how much time we, we do have left. So this is just Journey a few. Beyond are the proud operators of the GAN. Highlights of Indian Pacific. Train. Great can you hear my video there or not? And the Overland. Yep, we can hear that. All our journeys differ in destinations and experiences, with the same exceptional service on board. The GAN, Indian Pacific and Great Southern Journeys are all inclusive of off-train excursions, fine wines, beverages and dining. For the discerning traveller, Platinum Service adds an enhanced level of sophistication to the journey. Stylishly appointed, spacious suites with full-size ensuite. Expansive window views from both sides of the train and exclusive use of the Platinum Club carriage. By day, the cabin is configured as a private lounge with deluxe seating, a table and two ottomans. By night, the lounge converts to a comfortable bedroom with either a double or twin bed. Exclusive to Platinum guests, the Platinum Club offers a daytime lounge setting with adaptable dining options for either small or larger groups. The Platinum host will be available to serve drinks, cocktails and barista coffee. Our highly experienced onboard culinary teams work closely with local suppliers, farmers and providors, sourcing the finest ingredients to create innovative, regionally inspired menus accompanied by all-inclusive fine wines and beverages. The Outback Explorer Lounge is the social hub for gold service guests, the perfect setting to get to know fellow travellers, enjoy a beverage or a snack and catch glimpses of the passing landscapes through the wide picture windows. Regionally inspired fine wines and dining is all included in the fare. We serve our three course meals in the Queen Adelaide restaurant. Gold service twin cabins are the most popular level of service on board. The private cabin features an ensuite and a three seater lounge where guests can relax and watch the world go by. At night, the lounge converts to an upper and lower sleeping berth. Okay, I'll just uh, pause that there. Um, gives you a, a good indication of, uh, of the, the cabins and the, and the level of service. Uh, obviously at the moment um, with the, the global pandemic that we're, we're unfortunately living through, we have had to make uh, a few small changes to our, our trips, but luckily we haven't had to alter the itineraries at all. So we're still operating um, or able to operate as normal. The GAN season will kick off again in February next year. So hopefully by then we will have that travel bubble with New Zealand available. Now, we're not sure what restrictions we'll be operating under by February, but as it currently stands, Platinum Service, we haven't had to make too many changes in because there's fewer people in that section of the train and we've got enough floor space to accommodate everyone. In Gold section, we have had to structure access to the lounge cars a little bit more. 
and also structure the, the dining times a little bit more. Otherwise, we've implemented um, in, improved cleaning regimes as well as hand sanitizers on the train, as well as um, managing how guests get on and off the train and coaches for the, uh, the off-train touring and experiences. Um, otherwise, that's about, I'm not going to show you that, but, um, but that's me in a, in a nutshell and the GAN uh, rail journey. Uh, if you do have any questions, please feel free to, to shout out or uh, email them through and I can uh, get back to people individually. Thanks a lot for your time. Great. Thank you, Mark. That was really interesting. Meg, did any questions come through during that presentation? No, no questions have come through yet. So thank you very much, Jeff. That's great. Lovely. All right. So oh, next week. Mark. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> next week, actually, we have uh, Raffaella Draskler from Voyager. She's actually stepped in for Peter Graham. So, Raf, if you're ready and want to share your screen, you can take over. Hello, everyone. Thanks for your time today. Let me quickly get my presentation up. I'm not. So, can you see my presentation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Well, welcome everyone to Uluru, the spiritual heart of Australia, right in the center of our beautiful sunburnt country. How do you get to us? At the moment, flights from Brisbane and Sydney. So at the moment, two times a week from um, Brisbane and three times a week from Sydney, which will be increasing, hopefully, fingers crossed, if there's no more water restrictions, to six times a week from one to seven. So coming from New Zealand, your clients would either fly into uh, Sydney or Brisbane. At the moment, Sydney is open uh, for visitors uh, from overseas or from New Zealand. And um, you probably uh, would need to do one or two nights there because the flights depart fairly early in the morning, they depart around 10 a.m. So you can usually not get a connection. But if they do a few nights there, and then once Queensland opens their border, it's a perfect triangle. So you fly into Sydney, do some shopping, go up to Uluru, have some relaxation time and experience a bit of desert lifestyle in the Australian outback, and then you could make your way to Brisbane and go down to the Gold Coast. So there's a few itinerary options there. Now, I'll just show you what awaits you when you get to us. Hi, Raf. Meg here. Did you um, have some sound with this? The sound isn't coming through on your video. The sound is not coming through. No, it's not. Let's enjoy the images. I can hum along with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you know what it looks like. It is a beautiful destination. Um, continue on. So there's a lot to do once you get to us. Um, at Uluru, so um, there's the feet of light uh, that Karen already touched base on. So it's a art installation by a British artist. His name is Bruce Munro, and um, he created uh, this beautiful, really, really stunning installation in the desert. It is not right at Uluru, so it's a little bit removed from it, but you can see pretty much what you're seeing on this image here, Uluru in the backdrop, and it's 50,000 tent blown frosted glass spheres connected through fiberglass cables set up in an area of about seven football fields in size, and you get to walk through it. There are different options. So what's currently running is Feet of Light Star Pass. Uh, we'll take you out 30 minutes um, prior to sunset so by the time you get to the dune you're just just around sunset time and you there during the twilight you see the lights turn on you're on an elevated g top get canapes and drinks and then at the end um, once once it's dark and the lights are all fully illuminated you get to walk through the field of light on a self-guided walk it's a great opportunity for photos it's really amazing for your instagram um, your field of light pass general admission runs every uh, night with one departure at the moment from we're hoping from one april depending on what numbers are looking for us we'll be back to nightly departures with field of light star pass as well um so field of light pass general admission will take you 
with a bus to the field of light. Um, you get to walk through the field of light. You don't have any drinks or meals included. It's just really basic entry. It's $45 per person uh, Australian and um, you get to walk through the field of light, but you can spend quite a prolonged time there. So there is, this is a really good option for uh, people very interested in photography because you get that time to set up your camera and get that, that perfect picture. Another field of light is our dining option that starts up again from the 1st of April. So we had to pause it due to COVID. We'll pick you up an hour prior to sunset, you get canapes and drinks while you watch the sunset overlooking the field of light with Uluru in the backdrop. You get a three course dinner on shared tables. It's um, entree served at the table and then you have a buffet style um, mains and desserts and you get a star trek as well. So one of our local astronomers will come out and it will do an explanation on this mainly based on light because, you know, you get to see the field of light and it will explain to you how the night sky, the lights work. And it's, it's very, very interesting how light travels and all that. And um, all of our tours always include transfers to Leroux. Sounds of Science, another outdoor dining option. It's part of the Australian Hall of Fame. It's been there for 25 years and it's very similar to a night at Field of Light, um, except you're not near the Field of Light. So you're in a different dining site and um, you get a prolonged star talk. Um, it's a little bit shorter than the other one. So you, at the moment, because we don't run a night at Field of Light, I would recommend you to book both things. You book Sounds of Science on one night and a star pass on the second night. Um, but you can do that at any time. So if you want your clients to experience, have something else to do in the evening, you can always divide that up. There's so much more to do at Uluru though. So if you're not keen on walking the place of Uluru and Segway, you can go around by motorbike. You can see it by helicopter. So there's, there's a lot, a lot to do. You can bicycle ride around Uluru. Um, but once you get to us, there's five accommodation options. So we have um, hotel options from five star, four star, three star. We've got a lodge and a motor. We've got budget rooms. We've got a campground. So there's pretty much anything, something here for every budget and every kind of traveler. Um, at the moment, we've got three hotels open and the campground. So we've got our five star hotel sets in the desert. We've got the Emi Walk Apartments, which are great for families, and the Lost Camo, which is really good for your budget conscious couples or single travelers. We are located about 25 minutes to Uluru, but only six minutes to the airport. So it's a very short um, transfer from the airport to your hotel, and all airport transfers are included. Um, we've got a little town center where you've got a shopping uh, supermarket and all that, and we also have a shuttle bus that runs around and the resort, the ring road that you can see on this map here. So this gives you a bit of an idea of the layout. So in the top left, you see Sales in the Desert uh, that's currently open. You move down, you get to the Lost Camo, which is located right at the town center, where we have some cafes and shops. And then you go to Emu Walk Apartments. The other properties are still closed, but we're hoping they will, they will open in April and July. So I'll just show you a couple of pictures of the hotels that are currently operating. So we've got Sales in the Desert, that's our five-star hotel. We've just undergone a refurbishment, so including bathrooms. And the rooms are really nice and you still have that new cast now, so it's a good time to come and visit. And there's some really good specials out at the moment. In your walk apartments, we've got one and two bedroom apartments. Good thing to know for the apartments is um, then it's not very suitable for people with walking disabilities because you always have to walk steps to go in and out of the apartment and we don't have wheelchair accessible bathrooms. But both other hotels have that option. The Lost Camel Hotel is our three-star hotel. It has a really beautiful pool area. The rooms are, um, you know, I'll probably compare them to them either styles. Um, they are, this is our lead-in hotel, so Good for couples. It has a fairly open bathroom, so you probably don't want people there. They are not very comfortable with each other. Then maybe just book two rooms or put them in an apartment. Yeah. And that is all from me. So if you have any questions, you can email us directly. Head to our website. It's a really good um, starting point to just get general information on our properties, on the restaurants that we have. Um, and we also have a, an app at the moment that we just released. It's just if you go into the, your app store and just search for Airs Rock Resort, there's an app that actually gives you a lot of information as well and just an idea of, you know, how the resort works. And that is it from me. OK.
great. Thank great. you, Rath. That's fantastic. That's actually good to know for visitors heading over to Uluru to see great. what is on offer. Um, because I know there's a lot of really great free activities that are on offer at Ezra Resort as well, which is great. Sure. So um, next we're going to welcome Jeff Cameron Smith. If you want to share your screen, Jeff, that would be great. Yep. Come on. Yeah. How's that, Karen? Is it all there? Yep, looks good. And I think someone might have their phone, uh, their system um, not muted. So if they can, if everyone can just check, that would be really great. There's a lot. Cockroach and that is fine as well. Love a heckler. <laughs> there we go. All good. Keep going. Yep, all good. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Jeff, I'm a sales manager for Nautilus Aviation, uh, both Queensland and the Northern Territory. So you may have heard of the Nautilus brand um, from other areas. We actually got a base in Townsville. We've got one in Cairns, Port Douglas, uh, and the Torres Strait as well on Horn Island, and also a very active base in Darwin, which is what we talk about today. So we'll just uh, click through these slides and give a bit of a rundown on the variety of things we can do, uh, starting with Darwin City scenic flights. Uh, we do scenic flights to Litchfield and Kakadu National Parks as well. We tie in a lot of the iconic activities in Darwin region, things like airboats, uh, cruise on the wetlands, jumping crocodile cruises. So we use the helicopter to tie all those together and you can do all of those in a single day. And also heli fishing. And I'll tell you a bit more about the exciting million dollar fish competition that the NT government is running now in its sixth season. This uh, first slide gives you a little bit of an overview of the Darwin region. For those that haven't been uh, to Darwin, this is the, the city centre. You can see the sort of views on there, our 30 minute seating flight. You can see the convention centre down there, the uh, grey boat shaped building, it's quite flat. Um, this is the cruise line terminal as well, just down to the left, just out of the picture a bit. Uh, these scenic flights all depart from the city fringe. So we have a helipad, which is only a 10 minute drive from the middle of Darwin in Charles Darwin National Park. So either a hire car or a, a cheap taxi ride uh, over to the helipad and then we'll take you from there. The next slide I'll show you is just uh, one I stole from the Convention Centre website, so it's a little bit blurry, but really gives you an idea of how the, the cruise ship uh, side of the business works. So once the cruising gets up and running, obviously it's a, a big thing for the New Zealand market, uh, joining New Zealand and Australia and the tip of Australia. So we have about between 80 and 90 cruise ships that were scheduled to come into Darwin during 2021. Um, so don't miss the opportunity if you're booking people on a cruise to also book in some ground content while they're there. So you can see where the, the ship pulls in, uh, again, the convention centre. There's some lovely restaurants right out there at the front on Stokes Hill Wharf. And uh, yeah, quite a cute little city. Or right, on to the national parks. This is just one example. Um, of the Litchfield National Park flight that we do. I've created these maps uh, to try and give you a bit better idea of the lay of the land. If you haven't been to Darwin or the Northern Territory, you may not be familiar where places like Litchfield and Kakadu are relative to Darwin City. So where we are, where the big H is in the screen where it says start, finish, that's our main heli base. So it's about a 40 minute drive out of Darwin City. So we'll pick up your guests, transfer them out there. And in this particular flight, it's a 60 minute scenic flight out over Litchfield National Park. So all the major waterfalls you can see there, Florence Falls, Wongai, Tolmore Falls, some spectacular rock formations, an area called the Lost City. There is a private option on this as well, and um, where we can do a private waterfall, I'll show you shortly, and then uh, back to our starting points. All that within an hour. So it's great for those that don't want to spend the day driving around, it's a little bit warm in the summertime, and obviously the summertime as well as our, our wet seasons when we're getting more rain. So the waterfalls are spectacular uh, during those months, December through about March, when it might be hot, but it's also some of the best flying time for us as well. There's uh, one of the photos you get, one of the images you get, sorry, as you fly around Litchfield. You can see in this photo, uh, the doors are off the helicopter, which might freak you out a little bit, but it is the best way to go. Um, not only does it allow the airflow, keeps things nice and cool in the helicopter, but it's great for photography. So you see the gentleman in the back taking some photos, not doing it through glass, so you're not getting that reflection and the photos are, are perfect quality. So most of our tours are flown just with the people that you book. So if you book two people, there's a 99% chance that they'll be the only ones in the helicopter. So pretty much you're booking a per seat rate for these tours, 
um, but it's a sole charter more often than not. And there's a picture of the Lost City, there's some of the rock formations um, in Litchfield. This is one of the private waterfalls that we can go to. This is up at Sandy Creek Falls. And this photo I took myself from the back seat, the worst seat of the helicopter. So that's the worst view you're going to get. So the viewing in these smaller helicopters, the R44, it's called a Robinson R44. It's three seats maximum, uh, plus the pilot. But we'll fly, in this case, uh, we flew in and landed up the top right-hand side of that image. You can see that's the landing site. That's a different helicopter than when I was in that day, but it's um, same landing position. and. You'll see if you look really closely down by where the waterfall is, there's a couple of people there. We aptly named this one Proposal Falls. It's had its fair share of proposals. And uh, beautiful swimming there as well. So nice, cool water. So in the summertime, if it's 30, 32, 34 degrees, jump in there, cool off. And we'll spend an hour at this location. No one else will be there. There's no roads. There's no walking trails. Totally private. So it's definitely silent. If you land there, we'll give you a glass of champagne, something to eat. Uh, picnic lunch and just take in the serenity. It's a really lovely spot. Uh, moving on to Kakadu, as you can see again, the relation from Darwin out to Kakadu, the distances involved. Uh, Litchfield's quite a bit closer, Darwin, uh, Darwin out to Kakadu. Um, return about three hours with the helicopter, it's a three hour flight. So we'll fly out along the northern coast. So we'll go over things like the Adelaide River, um, the Alligator Rivers as well, uh, beautiful wetland areas past the rock formations out at Kakadu, and uh, we'll land at Jabiru, you can see on the map there, we'll refuel, because it's quite a long flight, and then head into Kawinda. And at Kawinda, we land, the customers have lunch there at Kawinda, and they join up with the team from Kakadu Tourism, and they take them over on a cruise on the Yellow Water, so Yellow Water cruise for an hour, and then at the end of the day, we do the shortest leg flying back into Darwin again. So Kakadu easily done in a day with the helicopter, um, the little add-on there, you can see the dotted line down to Jim Jim and Twin Falls. That's an add-on that we offer in the wet season. So if it's really been raining heavy, um, they are spectacular to see. So that's an optional add-on um, on the day. That's a bit of an idea of the sort of scenery you'll see. That's Twin Falls uh, in the dry. So that's as bad as it's going to get. You'll see in the wet season that whole face of the waterfall completely covered in water. So it is spectacular. And a bit of an idea of the, the yellow water cruise there as well. Okay, this one here. I was talking before about the um, airboat tours, jumping crocs. This is one way that we do connect with those tours. So you might have people that go through a list and say, these are the things I want to tick off. Well, we can do all of those with the helicopter. This is just one example. We can customise it uh, to suit if there's other things your customers want to see. But this particular option, we fly from our base out at Noonamar right out to the Merry River to do the airboat tour. It goes for an hour. Then we ferry you back to the jumping crocodile cruise, another hour doing a croc feeding, um, pole feeding on the Adelaide River, and then back to the iconic Noonamar Tavern for lunch before we transfer you back into Darwin. So just again, one idea that we can do, um, a lot of what we do is custom made. Um, helicopter charter is probably a lot more affordable than most of you would think. Um, roughly $1,000 an hour, you can get your own private helicopter. So. Um, if you don't like what's in the brochures, what's on the sites, then talk about what we can do to, to customise for you. This is the um, Merrill Wetlands. So you can see the airboat tour down there. got a thrill ride. It's exciting stuff. It's all fan driven. The bottom of those boats has got nothing hanging down. There's no keel. There's no rudder. So it's it's steered purely by the way they blow the wind out the back of that fan on, on the airboat. So that's quite an exciting option. Um, it won't suit people under four years of age or maybe someone that's got a back problem or they are smooth travelling, but if you've you know, got some issues like you know, pregnant women, for instance, you might want to take the other option, which is um, the Wildlands Cruise. You can see down there on the right, the same location. Um, we just take you on a, a tour boat rather than the air boat. So it's a lot slower. Um, it's equally as interesting because it focuses a lot more on the bird life. Uh, you can see one of the, the stalks here at the top. So one of the highest concentrations of water birds anywhere in the, in the territory found in this region, over 150 different species. So they get a lot of birding tours coming up that way, as well as being a very important breeding ground for these guys, the saltwater crocodile. And this is the jumping crocodile cruise. I saw Karen had the same photo. One of you got that from. Was that mine, Karen, that you stole? That's fine if you did. That's good. <laughs> it's not I'm, not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> from Spectacular Jumping Crocs. Um, the Adelaide River, where these are run, this is the highest concentration of saltwater crocodiles anywhere on the planet. 
So you stay as you go up there, you could literally walk across the backs of the crocodiles from one side of the river to the other. There's that many of them and they do perform. So they know the boats are there. They come very close. Um, the day I went out most recently on that one, the crocodile feeding like this, his head actually landed on the blue part of the boat. You can see there when he came down. So they do get extremely close. You get a really good look, some great photos, and obviously some amusing commentary that goes along with the guys that take the boat. You'll meet crocodiles called fluffy and tripod things with one leg missing or half a jaw missing from a fight with another croc. So a lot of stories that go along with it. Makes it a really interesting day. Okay, moving on to heli fishing. Now heli fishing is probably the the biggest thing we do in Darwin, it's the most popular option of all. It might sound a little bit niche straight off the bat, but um, we're finding a lot of people go out there that have no fishing experience whatsoever, and they're using the fishing tour um, as a, a way of seeing the sights as much as a, a fishing trip. So again, from our heli base where the start finish sign there is, we'll go out to those areas in the north where it says Cape Hotham and the coastal creeks and wetland area. That's our half day heli fish. So we'll fly up to an hour in total around those regions. And on the map, you'll see the sorts of things we're flying past. Again, the Adelaide River, which we just saw the jumping croc. So we'll see plenty of crocodiles on a standard helifish tour uh, to the point where we'll fly into some of the landing sites and there'll actually be a crocodile where we want to land. So we'll have to hover over the croc to give it a bit of a hurry on. Uh, the most recent one I heard from one of our pilots there was he was going to land right on the, on the uh, creek edge. And there's a crocodile there. It had about a 50 centimetre barrack in its jaws while they were trying to land. So I looked at him pretty annoyed, uh, slipped off back into the water, and um, the people fished from there for a couple of hours, knowing that there's these four to five metre crocodiles around the area. So it's a real wildlife experience. It's, uh, it's a little bit rough around the edges. It's true territory. You, get, you don't get this experience anywhere else. I know fly fishing is very popular in New Zealand. Um, so if you've got fishermen that are, are booking tours there, Canada as well, they book a lot of fishing. This is Australia's equivalent. This is the, the bees and knees of fishing in Australia. Chasing the barramundi is what we're looking for. Um, we also have a full day. So down to the bottom left of the screen, the Anson Bay and the Daly River mouth. It's a little bit longer flying time. Uh, we do go past the Litchfield National Park. So again, we can include things like Litchfield on the flight in and out um, on a full day. Uh, we can fly down, fish for three or four hours. You get six hours fishing on the full day. You might have caught enough fish. So We'll say to the customers, do you want to keep fishing or do you want to go see some other sites? As long as it fits within the allocated flight time, uh, we can fly back to the private waterfall, for instance, or we can go and just do a lap of the Litchfield waterfalls. Uh, one of the real popular options and something we've started recently, which Karen did mention at the start, is a heli pub crawl. So we can combine fishing going around to some of the pubs in the area. You can see their Crab Core Island Resort, the Noonama or the Noonie, we call it, uh, Goat Island Lodge, which is quite a unique spot as well. I'll just show you uh, some of the scenery that you're going to see on a, a full day heli fish. Just heading out to Anson Bay, beautiful Red Cliffs area of Anson Bay. So it's just as much a wildlife experience, a nature based experience, as it is a fishing trip. We'll see herds of buffalo in the wetlands. Um, we'll see dingoes chasing feral pigs. Uh, we'll see loads of sharks, crocodiles, all from there, depending on the, the region that we're flying in. This is just a, a typical landing site uh, for the heli fish the two different size helicopters we run in the Darwin base. So the one at the back, the smaller helicopters, the Robinson, the R44, we call it. That's a three-seat helicopter. So again, if you book two people, they would get that helicopter to themselves. We wouldn't add an, a third person that they don't know. It'll be run as a private charter. In the large machine at the front, uh, we can take five comfortably on a fishing trip in that one. Or we can take multiple. We can take both machines on the same day as we've done in this case. Uh, we have three of the Robinson aircraft and one of the larger ones. So uh, we could do 11, 12, 13 people in one day, no problem at all. An idea here of some of the landing sites we go to. So to get your head around the concept of heli fishing, we're not fishing from the heli. People think that maybe you're flying along and you're throwing lures out the helicopter, which wouldn't be real safe. So we don't do that. We just use the heli to access really cool areas. So we're going to places, isolated areas, where you're not going to find boats, you're not going to find people that have rocked up in four-wheel drives because they're inaccessible areas. At the top left is a, an area uh, you, just, you can't drive into. We've landed right on the bank, and uh, you'll catch some large barra there. These creeks here, these will be full of crocodiles. Um, the pilots that we have are all trained fishing guides, so they're going to give you a really good safety uh, briefing at the start about where you should and shouldn't go, where you should stand. If you're real in a big fish, they're going to help you get it up the bank so you're not getting into harm's way. 
And um, interesting fact, the pilots actually carry handguns with them. So they actually go out there with a Glock, which is the same as the, the police use in Australia, just on the off chance they had a, a negative encounter with a crocodile. But uh, every croc we've seen so far, it's just been a real bonus to the day. People just love to see that wildlife. It's not uncommon to have a, a good sized bar on the line and the croc will chase the bar in as you're reeling it in. So it's, it's really quite a special spot. Uh, down the bottom left is the Red Sands area. Again, we're landing on the, the edge doing some rock fishing there. The nearest boat ramp's about 100 kilometres away. So you're not going to bump into anyone else. Up the top right, we've had some really heavy rain in this case. That's the Adelaide River again. And you can see the wetland has just extended itself. So we'll just find a, one of those mounds to land on and we'll fish pretty much anywhere in that region. And it'll all be crawling with barramundi. You can see the bottom right there the day the, the tide was up a little bit. And that's what we're after. This is the, one of the barramundi. This is a metre long barramundi. This is a, a prize fish. This is what people are coming to, to Darwin to catch from all over the world. Uh, we had one gentleman that came up from Victoria last year and um, he flew up, took the tour on his own. You have to have a minimum of two people normally for the tour to be viable to run, but he's paid for two seats to come out and fish. Uh, caught a fish this size within the first 10 minutes of his six hours of fishing. And he's like, well, job done. What else is there to do? And so we'll keep fishing. Uh, he caught another fish, which was a legal size fish, and we've taken that fish with us and we've flown back to the Noonamai Tavern We've handed the fish over to the public and he's chucked it in the kitchen and they've scaled it, prepared it up and the gentleman ate the fish with about half a dozen beers for the rest of the afternoon. So he turned his full day fishing into a fishing heli fish pub crawl, which is um, part of the, the reason we had the idea to do that as a, as a fixed tour. It really does give you the both ends of the, the spectrum. Now, as a rule, um, we're not taking the fish with us. We have a, a catch and release policy. So in the wet season, in the in the peak fishing, March, April, May, we're really getting loads and loads of barramundi. We'll catch 40 to 50 fish this size in one day. And for a start, there's nowhere to put them in the helicopter if you've got that many fish. Plus, we do it to protect the fish stocks. So your people are coming out, they're fishing areas that we know have got fish, and uh, everyone, everyone wins the fish, lives another day. Now, there is um, a competition that's been running for the last six years, which is called Million Dollar Fish. Um, I'll just actually go on past that one for a sec. This is, I'll go back to those other slides. Uh, the Million Dollar Fish um, is a competition that the NT government will be running into the sixth season now. So I uh, started on the 1st of October, we'll go through to the end of March. And this competition, they tag the fish with up to a million dollars in prize money. So there's been seven fish which have got a million dollar tag on them. At this stage, all seven are still out there. So. Don't sit around, hurry on. Um, good news is $10,000 fish, there's 100 of those. We've had seven of those caught already this season. So that as well as right down the bottom, there's one called a double tagged barrel where you get a $10,000 prize if you catch that fish and uh, 5,400 you make. So one of those has been caught as well. So you can still see there's loads of opportunity there to still catch a lot of fish. I'm trying to back up the, the slide here to see if I can get it to go. That's what I was after. So that's... um. The heli, heli fish pub crawl day would work. So in this case, we're flying up to the fishing zone in the morning, that area with the red box, for about three hours of fishing. And we might have three or four different sites within that area that will move the heli around to make sure we're catching lots of fish. And again, the customer can decide on the day how they approach it. In that case, we then fly down to Goat Island Lodge. And that is a, an island right in the middle of the Adelaide River. You're sitting at the pub there. You can only access it by a helicopter or a boat. There's no, no way to drive there. And you'll be sitting at the pub up on this Queenslander style building, looking down at the Adelaide River and crops will come up out of the water and feed on the edge. So again, it's a really special experience for, for visitors. We're going to go over to Crab Claw Island Resort, um, where we've got the beach landing we do. That's the, the landing there at Crab Claw Island Resort. And uh, you buy these, you can have, have lunch there if you like. Beautiful setting. Uh, back to that then. And that is me. That is the end of all our, our slides. So um, just to clarify the connection between Nautilus and Helifish, we've got two brands that we run in the Darwin region. Uh, Helifish itself, you go to www.helifish.com.au, that'll give you all the information on Helifish, some pretty cool videos to how the day works. Um, now, Helifish themselves have never dealt with the trade. So when we purchased the company about six years ago, uh, we wrapped up the product, added a few bells and whistles to it, and we've pushed it out under the Nautilus Aviation brand, which does deal with the trade and obviously pays commissions. 
So that's um, you can go to the Halley Fish to get your info, and then either go to your wholesalers or if you're a wholesaler yourself, um, talk to Nautilus uh, for rates, and um, we'll go from there. So that's um, in a nutshell what we do. But come and see us. Come fishing. Great, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. That was fantastic. Pleasure. I think we've got a question there, Meg. Have we got a right. question? Yes. Um, Jeff, right. Sharon O'Brien has asked what the range of pricing is for half day and full day heli fishing, please. Sure, Sharon. Thanks for asking. Uh, Nine hundred dollars get you a half day heli fish. Uh, so the half day you're up to an hour of flying and up to three hours of fishing in three different sites, and the full day is fifteen sixty per person, and that gives you up to two hours flying and six hours of fishing and uh, any combination between. But as I was saying, you can, on the full day in particular, because we've got quite a, quite a bit of time for fishing, the six hours, we'll leave it up to the customer. If they stay the one site, they move to one of five different sites or add on things like the waterfalls of the past. So yeah, there are leading prices, 900 and 1560 half and full, minimum of two people per, per trip. Great, fantastic. Thank you for that. Thank and um, obviously, you know, the talk of crocodiles when you're talking to New Zealanders is a little bit frightening, but I can assure fantastic. you that everything is very safe when you're in the Northern Territory, <laughs> um, as long as you follow the rules. All right, well, thank you so much for that, Jeff. I'm just going to quickly share my screen and put up my contact details so that people can um, just uh, get in touch if they need to. So these are the details here. This is the um, the website with uh, the trade training program on it. And this is my email here. So if you do have any questions about the Northern Territory that you're a bit stuck on or you need, you know, you want to contact or just some ideas or whatever, just feel free to get in touch with me. I can um, point you in the right direction. So thank you so much to all of um, our operators that attended today. And thank you to everyone who has joined in from New Zealand. It's been really great to have you here. Um, so, yeah, that's it from us. We will be in touch in about three months when we do the next quarter of the training program. Um, so, yeah, we hope that we'll hear from you in between now and then. So thanks very much, everybody, and we'll see you then. See you later.